process with Blackboard for me is um, the computers aren't necessarily natural. I have to think about what I'm doing with it. And that initial process was a little complicated, but once you have it in place, it's significantly more simple than, than when we went through live text, in my opinion. I thought it was a much easier tool to use, but there are a couple of steps to begin with. So um, yeah, I'm ready to start whenever you are. Okay. So do you wanna go to, let's see, you're driving, right? Yep, I'm driving, so go ahead and... Uh... So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically, bro we broke this down into really four major sections. The first one's going to be how you import from the Master Blackboard course. The second's how you create and edit assessments. So that's once you've got it into your Blackboard course, how you actually put it into your gradebook so you can use it. And then Andy's gonna follow at the end and he's gonna talk about how you use other formats, cutting and pasting, thinking about folks that are using Macs so that that can help them or Chromebooks. And then at the end, we'll have time for questions and answers. One of the things I want, if you're interested, because this ha happens to me, I think I understand something, yet once I get into the computer, I'm unable to remember how to do it or I've run into something that's a glitch. I'd like to invite you all to um, join us and, and follow along as we go through, because what we've done is we've done screenshots to show you where you need to go. So your first starting point is going to be Blackboard, um, just your general Blackboard front page. Um, and once you get there, we can kind of start from that section. So the first slide is you're going to, once you got into Blackboard, you're going to go down to the middle of your Black, I'm using my hand as if you can see it. Um, you're going to go down to the middle of towards the bottom where it says courses where you are a student and you'll click on College of Education rubrics. So go ahead and get there if you want to. Once you've gotten to that page, you'll click on the rubrics. Um, and not the BB how to, make sure that you're doing that rubric section. I made that mistake and got lost for an hour. Okay. So once you get to there, you'll pick on whichever, this is the best department to use, but <laughs> some of you have other departments. So you have to decide which ones you want, but you could pick on your specific department. In this case, I did EDF because you know, it's the best. So click on that folder. And once you've gotten into that folder, then you're going to um, pick which particular rubric you want. They're gonna be listed um, in there as they are here. I'm using 315 because I use that this summer and that's the one that I want. Um, you wanna export it. And I use this one specifically because see the top line? If you click on the PDF, all it's going to give you is a PDF. You wanna click on the one that says um, the rubric export file. So Terry, click on that. Terry, yeah. yeah. Can you hold on for a second. I think some people are still catching up to you for- Oh, I'm being too fast. Yep. Well, no, I just, I, I think there ought to be some pauses in here just to make sure that people can get to where you are. Um, Let's take a minute and see if yeah, there's any make questions. Make sure everybody's caught point. up. Yep. If you need, if you have some questions at this point, throw it into the chat or open up the mic and uh, just uh, jump in here. Okay, the rubrics. Okay. I can go back to the previous slide if that would help some people and just run through it again. Now let's do it one more time. I think that's a great sure. idea, very, even from the very beginning. That would be great. Yeah, okay. for those of us so, that find a few minutes late. Yeah, so uh, go ahead, Terry. But uh, the first thing you wanna do is get into your, just your face, the Blackboard face, your general face uh, that you're gonna see when you get into Blackboard. And then so you're gonna the My Blackboard account, right? Yep, yep. And you have to scroll down because all of your courses come up first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's generally a little ways down on the list and uh, it's under where you are a student. If you feel like you, if everybody's found that, can you let us know in the tabs if everybody that's trying this kind of has an idea where they're at? Or if you don't, just speak out so we can help you. I don't have one that says where I'm a student. All I got is uh, organizations where you are a leader or you are a participant. Is it a participant that I check on? Hold on, let me get to mine a minute. I'm going to defer to Kim on that one. Oh, wait a minute. No, I never mind. I screwed up. I got it. Yeah. For I'm mine, happy that it was you and not me. Yeah, Jim, <laughs> mine, mine was way down the, towards the bottom of my page. So Yeah, I just missed the part where you were a student. I didn't know I was a student. 
All right, so that's why it's confusing. It, it looks is. like and that's why we're doing it. Yep, and it looks like uh, most of us are at this page. So I'm going to go to the next slide, which is once you're on the College of Education rubric um, master site, you're going to click on the rubric um, button there. It's on the left hand side menu. Yep, yep I got it. Left hand side menu. That should open up. And, and then you're going to see all the different departments rubrics. Yep, got it. Of course, Terry's favorite is EDF. I'm going to I'm going to uh, confront him on that and say EDL is probably uh, you know where I want to go. But um, I don't know. I'm just saying this is my experience. Okay. So, so these just just some information. These are folders, right, in Blackboard that hold the rubrics in a compressed format. Correct. Yeah. 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 And so when you download it, after you've gotten to this page here at that bottom spot where you find the rubric export file, it's going to show up in your left hand corner in most um, in most devices as a zip file. Yeah. And for Windows people, this will show up in your download folder. Right. Yeah. So that's the next step we're going to talk about. Like, where are you actually going to have this housed? The only thing I wanted to add, Andy, that I think is important for us to all remember is that. If you get to the place, when we get to the place where we actually open up this rubric, if you're wondering where this came from, it came from your department. Right. So, um, you know, this isn't about the rubric itself. We assume that the rubric that's loaded in there is the one that you approve for Karen to have it loaded to this Blackboard site. So if that's not the case, you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have to get back with her and let her know that you need to have it switched. So, so I have a question. Yep. yep. On, on my screen, I have the rubrics, but I don't have the file above it that Terry was talking about. You're not always going to have the file. You're not always going to have the PDF. In fact, okay. most of them don't. Okay. But sometimes they are there. And if yeah. it is the PDF, just don't click on that one. Okay. Well, you can, but it's not going to get you what you need. You don't okay. need it. Yeah. Okay. So are when we good? I, Go ahead. Um, when I open mine, so I downloaded EDC 621. Uh -huh. And I downloaded the rubric. And when I open the download, I don't have anything that's readable. Right. Yeah. No, that's, right. Okay. that's it's, okay. It's in a special format that can be imported into Blackboard. So it's not going to look like anything you can view or see. Okay. Right? It's yeah. not we'll, act go, go ahead. ahead Rick. Well, I was just going to say, it's not actually going to be anything you can read right now until you actually upload it into Blackboard. Then it unzips okay. and that's where you can actually see it. Okay. Okay, then I have one last question. As I'm looking through the rubrics from my department, I'm only seeing a fraction of um, the ones that should be there. That's a great question. Program. That's a great question, yeah. So what do you do about that? <laughs> <laughs> you have a conversation with your colleagues about who was responsible for creating and exporting your rubrics for all your courses. These are common assessments right. into this folder so that they could be compressed into this file. So, so there's no way that would be me, is it? <laughs> oh, we have no way. That's above our pay grade. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm it's so Jim Grant in your that. department. <laughs> Stop it, Andrew, you fathead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're being recorded here. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, no, back to that question. Um, again, I think yeah. there was a time, <clears throat> I don't know how long ago it was. It seems like it was a long time ago where we were asked to do this as departments, as programs, you know, so, so in special ed, I don't know, maybe somebody did, the, Joe or somebody, did, Monica, did this for you guys? I can't imagine. I mean, some of them, I see like two that are there in the undergraduate program, but that's it. Most of the stuff up here is on the in the graduate program. Sandy, if I can chime in a second, I will say mm -hmm. for any field courses, if you have cooperating teachers that are working with you in a field course, yeah. that's not going to be facilitated through Blackboard this semester because we had an issue with trying to create accounts for the cooperating teachers. So we're doing that outside of Blackboard this semester. Now I'm talking about our course rubric. Okay. That would be something to double check with Karen then. Okay, thank Is you. Is it Karen or Amy? Probably That's Karen since Karen's facilitating the rubrics. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. I don't know what everybody else's experience was, but Karen was um, in touch with the GPDs in our, in our two programs for EDL, and we were the ones helping her get the rubrics for the courses. Yeah, we had the same experience. 
That's, hmm. that's why that's why foundations and, and leadership are the best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. At least we're in we're in the conversation now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. Interesting. Any so other I, questions about this slide? You know Is what? That, I'm going to just stop you both. Um, there are several folks who have things in the chat that you might want to take a oh, look sorry, at. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, Gabriella has had her hand raised, and there's some <laughs> folks who say that they don't they don't see things that they are expecting right. to Nine see. Yon. Okay, where are we? What, where are some of the questions? Let's see. Um, Gabriella said, I've had my hand raised for a couple of questions. Why don't you go ahead, Gabrielle? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm looking at the, thank you for, first of all, thank you for putting uh, this uh, workshop together. I was wondering how we're going to transition from live text to this um, uh, way of collecting assessment data for accreditation purposes. So thank you very much. It's very much needed. I'm looking in Blackboard and I downloaded a couple of things for uh, my courses. So if I'm teaching a split course, um, six um, um, elementary and secondary supervision evaluation, this is 667671. Um, I downloaded both rubrics. I hope that's okay. Um, the other thing is I have a similar problem like somebody else who mentioned here for the practicum um, EDL 685, I see a couple of rubrics. I don't know what the 685B is, program assessment, three public reporting of idea key performance indicators. And then there is program assessment director field practicum. I clicked on the program assessment director field practicum, although I don't know if this fully describes, you know, All what we're doing with our 685s and then there is another one for candidate portfolio for 687. So, um, so there are two, these are two different situations when I have multiple rubrics for the same course. And um, well, is that- I, I can clarify for 685, 687. There is no, you don't have to worry about any of the 685 rubrics. We don't use them. The only time we assess our students for in a rubric fashion for EDL, field practicum courses is in 687. So you can ignore the 685 ones and then 687 will do in the winter semester for our candidates that started in 685 and then continued through. So there's no need to worry about 685 right now. Um, it would be the portfolio, um, the one that you saw that you mentioned, Gabriella, the portfolio assignment for 687 that we would use for our 685 and 687 students. All right. And then for the other one, my split class, it's okay to have two rubrics? It is okay. They, I'm assuming that they're the same. Um, as, once we get through this process, you'll see that it'll be in your, it, your students won't see it, but you will see in your grade book two rubrics. So what you want to do is probably identify which students are 667 and which students are 671 and um, then only assess those students based on that rubric so you don't have to assess each student twice on two different rubrics does that make sense i'll have to play with it but thank you for the explanation i'll have to play with it this semester to see how it works yeah and i'm thinking that um we can if we have a EDL program meeting, we could actually make this a topic where we can go through it together. Mm. Sounds good. As Thank a follow you. up to this. No, Thank I you. thought you did, did. Did all your questions get answered? Mine. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So Not thanks. <clears throat> uh, it, it sounds like you're struggling getting down to the um, to where the courses are for my students. So you're going to drag down below my organization. Keep going under library resources, under faculty staff. Let me, maybe I lied to you, hold on. And then it will be right, there's a spot at the top where it says um, student, where I'm a student. And then that's where you're gonna find your master courses. If you want, I can come in and help you when you come into, into the campus the next time too. So you go to under your um, my assigned term, I minimize them because it helps you find stuff under my courses. You'll find it right in there. Under no assigned term. My courses. 
So go on the very top where it says my courses. Yeah. Go underneath where it says no term assigned. No term assigned. Do you see it? Then there's yeah, courses where you are. I, I don't see that one. I see I've, uh, where is my courses. I have where uh, you are an instructor. Yeah. And Another then one there. I drop down and I have courses where you are teaching assistant. Okay. Then under that one. And uh, that one, I have, uh, well, all the courses fall for spring and then after I have my organizations, okay, organizations some... where you are, a you are, and then leader, organization where you are participant. Yeah, it should be above and that, Diane. My it above that part. It's above that part. It's above my organizations, directly above that. There's courses that you are not, where, the, where Terry said there's no term assigned. They're directly above that, like places where you are. A student, like I'm a student in applying andragogy in online discussion, but no, also I don't have that. So you don't have any of those? Mm -hmm. No, not uh, on the right hand side. I am going to be in the middle. I have it on the left. Middle. In the middle. Well, in the middle? Yeah. For mo Kim, most Blackboard uh, mm -hmm. sites for okay, us as instructors. I have, uh, in the middle. My announcements, GVSU library resources, find it, get Diana, help. Are you in your course or are you in, the, are you in your specific course or are you in the main page that you just get into my Blackboard? No, I am in my Blackboard. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's, Diane, you're not looking under organizations, correct? Because this is a course. No, no. I am in okay. uh, the, the first page when you log in uh, my Blackboard. Yeah. Where you have a... Uh, uh, on your uh, left hand side, tools, helps, report sexual uh, misconduct. Uh, What's in the middle? With that little thing, and in the middle, I have uh, uh, it starts with my announcement G GVSU library, and then find it, get help, resources. No, nope, you need to be left, just. Look under all of your, and everybody's Blackboard portal is probably different. And if you don't have yours arranged according to terms like how the others have, you may not see it that way. So it's going to be near the bottom of your list of courses because you've been enrolled as a student. And I did just double check and I can see that your enrollment is in this course. So if you've attended any workshops, Nyan, where you've been loaded as a student in a, in a Blackboard course, it's going to be in that same kind of area. Yeah. Okay, let me. Yeah, why don't, if you I go, mean, you ahead, might and, go, go ahead, ahead and go on, and Nyan, yeah. know that we can always work with you later individually okay. if you can't find it, but it's going to be in your list of courses and it's going to be with student access. So it's not going to be assigned to a term where you normally teach. It's yeah, going to be I know, but at the bottom. usually I, I see it, but I don't see it this morning. Okay. Know. So uh, just before we get moving on to the next slide here, Terry, I just wanted to clarify in the chat. Thanks, Alex, for posting this. Um, EDL 685B and C rubrics are used by Cindy Smith. So, so Gabriella, that kind of responds a little bit to what you were asking about 685B and C rubrics. Thanks, Alex. Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide here, Terry. And this is where we get into... Um, this is how we download. Right. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. The way that I did it, just because I think it, it, it will naturally save in your downloads folder, but sometimes I have a hard time finding it. So it's really important that you remember where you save this thing, because it's going to be hard to find. So I typically right click on the rubric. So you can see at the top where it says um, rubric, uh, rubric export file. So I right click on that and then I find a place that I'm gonna save it that I can, that I'll be able to locate it pretty easily later. So I circled it where I did it as a desktop. So go ahead and take a minute and make sure that you can, you can find that and download it. It will either be in download folder or it will be wherever you put it. It'll default to download folder for Windows. I don't have any idea where it goes for Apple. Right. I was going to say on a Mac, it's going to look totally different. But the other thing you can do if you want is once you find it and you can search for the word rubric, um, 
you can just double click on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you can move it somewhere or write down where it is. Like if it's in desktop here, you could just use that when you get to the import stage. Thanks, Erica. Yep. And it's the same as with the with the PC. You can with with Mac, you can just create a folder in your download and just and label it rubrics and then right. place it, it in there, there so you can find it easily. Okay, so you're, the point of this slide really is just to make sure you know where you're going to save it to because you're going to have to retrieve it from there. After you've done that, you're going to start to go to your navigation folder. So you're going to navigate specifically to your classwork folder that you want this to be in. So ask me the right term and all of that as you go through. So think if this semester for me, it's um, I put it in 315.02, the hybrid section. So this is within the fall semester. And you click on it like you normally would to get into Blackboard. Can we stop for a second? I just want to yep. let people know. Yeah. If you have multiple sections of courses in Blackboard, you have to import this into each section. Yes. So let's take a second to make sure everybody can get caught up. Are there any questions about getting to this spot? Yeah, Andrew just said we have to import it into each one of our sections. If we've had our sections combined into a parent, do we still have to do it to each section individually? No, I would use the parent. So. I'd use the parent okay. site. Okay. And import it to the parent site. Perfect. Thank you. Also, will it course copy in the future? No idea. We don't know that. We're, yeah. <laughs> We're like one <laughs> step ahead of you guys. <laughs> Um, uh, that, here's here's good, my take but... on that. I use course copy a lot and I think it will probably do that. You may have to select one of the options. You know how you can pick what you want to copy over. Um, I generally go down through that list and I got to believe and somebody can tell me if I'm wrong that there's a way to copy it when you copy a course content. Oh, there you go. Kim's got it in the chat there. As long as you select rubrics, it should copy over. Okay. I've always been able to copy my rubrics easily. So All right, so once we've clicked on our folder, mm. you're going to go to course tools. From course uh -huh. tools, you go to import rubric and we're going to take a second to let everybody get there. So you click go down on the left hand side where step eight says you go to ru rubric at the in the middle underneath course tools. I'm pointing at it as if you can see me. And then you click on import rubric is the next step. You know, I'm sorry, I'm so lost. Okay, let's back up, Sandy. Um, so I, <laughs> so I'm back to where the rubric is. <clears throat> okay. And I went to Go click on more. that. Which, um, which rubric? Um, so I'm looking at EDS 495 IEP simulation exam. I mean, it's just one of my rubrics. So okay. I, I clicked, so I shouldn't open it from here. I should try and save it from here, from my Blackboard site. Is it already in your Blackboard site? Well, no, 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 it's on Blackboard. It's not in any one of my courses yet. Right, so I'm at the screen behind where we were just a second ago, where I can see all the different rubrics and there's the you know rubric export file piece. This one? This one? Yes. No, Okay, so this yeah, is where, this is the spot where you've saved the rubric from the master mm -hmm. rubric site. That, right. Uh, so can I open? It? So I'm struggling with. I you guess don't need I, to open it at this point. Just I leave it to, there. Okay. It's better that you don't open it because yeah. it's, it's just because it's just easier. The whole process gets simpler if you just save it and then so, click on the whole thing later. So I guess that's the part I'm struggling with. Do I want to save link as? I'm I'm right clicking. I have a Mac. Um, I'm not sure what to do with that <laughs> when you once you pick the location that you're going to save it to then you should be able to just do save and it it goes to that spot and you, then later on when yeah. we get to the next couple steps we're going to show you how to pull it from there and then the file will unzip in your blackboard site okay so i guess that's the part so you're if i go the game sandy you're not behind <laughs> Well, it's still sitting in my general Blackboard area. <laughs> so if, if I double click, 
save um, oh click on save link as ah okay and if go. i say save link as and then i just need to and then what do put i do someplace. just put it someplace yep oh i see uh, just put it in a location that you can find it later Perfect. i'm and there it, it defaults okay. into down it defaults into download right right okay I, i'm ready now thank you okay so then you've picked your site you pick the course that you want to um upload you're going to eventually upload the rubric to like Terry mentioned earlier quick question mm -hmm. of course so i downloaded four rubrics for my classes and i save them on desktop but they are labeled similarly so i got to the blackboard to the first course i found the tools and you know i'm ready to import the rubric but i cannot distinguish between which the one is which that I downloaded, they, they are, they're all labeled similarly. So there's no what? indication which one is this. It's weird. But I'll play with it later, so I'll figure it out. But just wanted to share that it, I think it's funny. You may want to look at like the last three digits of the save. Um, oh, that's a good way so to maybe smart. check, because you're right, they are all labeled the same. But then there's that huge number at the end. Just focus in on the last three digits. Mm -hmm. um, and match that up to what you dropped in. Well, nine to seven, nine to seven, nine to nine, five to nine. I don't think that tells me too much. Anyways, I'll play with it. Now I know the system, I know the process. So I think that, you know, I can figure it out later. Well, they, yeah, but they, I thought it was funny to share. Gabrielle, what I did was just change the name of it to EDC 621 yeah. rubric. And that made Smart. it easier. Yeah, 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 I should have done that. Yeah, when I saved them. I had to go back and do it. <laughs> the the other thing you could do is you could just do one course at a time as well, depending yeah. on if you think that's more efficient or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, once you're in your course that you're using, as Terry mentioned earlier, you're going to go down the left-hand side to course tools. And at that point, you, you, when you click on course tools, you then have access to the tool called <clears throat> rubrics and it's going to open up and you're going to click on import tool. And just Once you clicked on import tool, you do browse your computer. And this is where it's important with the slide a couple before where you remember where you put it, because just like you normally pick up a file, you're going to do the same thing. Just let us know if we're going too fast. So on mine, I put it on my desktop, which makes most tech people upset. But then I click on that, and then you submit. So, so basically, Terry, what you're saying is you clicked on this rubric ex export file, 315, right. and then you click Submit. You didn't double click, you clicked once. I just click submit. I don't want to open the file. I just want to click submit when I when right. I click on the whole thing. I highlight it and then I submit. And I think submit's the next file to show. So yep. Yep. So, so you, you go ahead. Any questions on this? So You're you can good? you can see now once you once you selected that file. You can see that it's sitting there. The file name is there. And like Terry said, you're going to just click submit. And now it's you. Yep. And now you have this um, rubric available as you can add it to your particular assignment. Okay. So, so this is, this is a screenshot I made where I, I knew I had imported, or in my case, copied and pasted in a new rubric in Blackboard. And so I went to my assignment and I scrolled down underneath points and there's a place where you can say rubric. It's a button. Add rubric. Yep. And then you get this little screen that opens up and it says, mm -hmm. which rubric do you want? In my case, I have two for this particular course. So I clicked on the one that I wanted for this particular assignment and then submit boom and what that does in blackboard is it 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 takes that rubric and it unpacks it and it uses it to populate the assessment rubric stuff 
And it kind of looks like this. If you're not familiar with rubrics and Blackboard, it's basically um, you know, a table. Um, one of the things I've found is that um, you still have to go in and put in the points for the assignment, right? That's not gonna be done for you. So just remember that. You're gonna have to come in here anyway and do that part. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, and, and if you don't, because it will it will aggregate sometimes into your point system if you're not careful. So whatever your rubric points are, which might be different than your grade, it's going to put that in there. So if you have 100 points that you have for a grade, for example, and you just click on the rubrics without making sure that you're adding it in separately, it'll 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 put in the grades that you have for your rubric. Yeah, and so this is a good point that this is a great point for us to just stop and talk for a second about um, how you are assessing students because like Erica mentioned if we align the rubrics in blackboard. Am I required to share this rubric with students as this assessment is different than how i'm figuring out the grade great, great comment question. great question because it's really critical that you understand what's going to happen at this point going forward. You don't have to allow the students to see the rubric in your grade book. In fact, you have the option to click no. Um, and if you are assessing the students with this particular assignment differently than using the rubric, the rubric can be used as a secondary grading option. Okay. Um, and actually, you can allow it to be. Um, I don't know, I'm not using the right language here, but you can ensure that the root, how you're assessing students on the rubric is not being used as their grade. Um, so you can have points assigned for a particular assignment and also assess the student, but the assessment in the rubric does not necessarily, if you choose that option, it will not be um, put into the grade. And Andy, do you want to just uh, share what's going on in this particular screen? Yeah, I, I'm old school. So I decided this summer that I would just take the document, the Word document I had with the, with the actual table and copy and paste over mm -hmm. the items into the, the Blackboard rubric. That way I could go through and associate them with the standards. And I could also um, use that to, to change the points. Like I use a hundred points. Some people use a million or a thousand. Um, so so I, I had to go in and, in and do that. So I just thought, well, I'm just gonna do it this way because it makes sense. And then the last thing you have to understand is that the points have to, have to reflect what you've said they were in your syllabus. Um, so don't, don't be careful because if this is how you're grading students, you wanna make sure that the points, if, you're, if they align completely with an assignment, are the same. Yeah, that's a great point. And that also goes with uh, Erica's new comment in the chat about, and um, so I will need to complete this assessment again, separately for the COE evaluation assessment, separate from what I'm doing with um, doing for students and the feedback I'm providing. And the answer is yes. Uh, I'll give you an example. And actually what I could do, let's see what's next here. Um, well, let's keep going, but then I want to get, come back to you, Erica. I can show you in my course a particular assessment that um, I'm using that is exactly what you're describing, which is to say that I'm, I have a grade for them, but then I'm assessing them separately in for CAPE and accreditation purposes, but that's not being counted as part of their grade. So... Um... If there aren't any more questions other than Erica's, we're gonna go ahead and keep going and then we'll open it up to Q&A. Rick, if you can go to the next slide, that'd be great. Yep. So just a couple of things I've learned um, with rubrics. First thing is it's a complex process where a bunch of windows open on your desktop. And sometimes it's confusing because you're editing and you're saving and then you're, and the key is you have to make sure you save your assessment before you go back to the, or your rubric before you go back to the assessment. Otherwise it will disappear, that's happened to me. So just be very careful. Um, I tend to go and save and then come back and save and come back because that happens once and, and then you don't let it happen again and from my perspective. And then I said before, if you are using this to, as a part of your regular assignment, be sure to check that the points or the percentages are the same. 
Yep. Mm. This is uh, just part of, and you'll everyone will get this, but this is just part of the slide deck. Um, some resources and uh, help that you might, uh, some links that you can use as a way to um, begin the journey in terms of understanding how you're going to navigate this. But I, I would say, you know, one first, I, you know, Vince, I hope you're not going to get upset with me about this, but I tend to, when, I, when I'm run stuck and I'm trying to figure this out, um, I ask Vince and Vince is very helpful in helping me navigate and and run through it because even though I went through the experience this summer of doing it, I'm now back in it again this semester and I'm trying to recall exactly the steps. And so, you know, it's not something you're doing real frequently. And as we know, if you're not doing it on a regular basis, you tend to forget. So Vince is a great resource, but these are these um, links here are also a great resource. So um, before, we can we can start Q and A, and while we're doing that, I'll queue up my course and show you um, how you can make the rubric a secondary um, assigned assignment, not the primary one that is where you're actually assigning grades. And then maybe uh, Terry or Andy, if you guys can keep an eye on the chat yep. while I'm doing that, um, that'd be great. So go ahead and. Uh, Go ahead and ask some questions, and then uh, I'll I'll get uh, my course queued up here and show you what I'm talking about. Is anybody stuck? I'm stuck. All right, where are you stuck, Sandy? <laughs> well, I thought I um, uploaded my rubric uh -huh. to my Blackboard course, um, but what I have oh, whoops, somehow I just lost it. Um, what I have on the screen now that I see it, I see the EDS IEP simulation final, I see that title, mm -hmm. and there's a description that's basically just about filling out a rubric, um, but I don't see the rubric and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm clearly I didn't do something right, but I don't know what it is. So looking at the end of, was it a zip file that you clicked on? Yeah, it was a zip file. Um, and did you, so did you write, when you right clicked on it, where did you save it to? Well, I saved it to my desktop. Okay. And so then I went back to my desktop and thought I pulled it into my course, but. Um, all right. So let's back up to the spot where oh, you. Oh, you know what? I take it back. I just, okay. so when I, when I, when I click on open, it opens a separate window for me with the rubric. Is that what's supposed to happen? I was too busy playing with it to be paying attention there for a few minutes. A separate window for the rubric. Yeah, it's got a separate, it's opening it up as a separate window. So while we're considering that question, Vince, <laughs> my question to you, since I know you're on the call is what would be the best way to show people um, should I go into my grade book or should I show them through opening up the assignment and submitting an assignment and then going through that process? Yes, yeah, so if you'd like to, you can enter your student preview mode once again and, and uh, submit an assignment. And then that way you can actually go through the process from the very beginning as an instructor would look at that assignment then within the grade center that a student has submitted. I, I think that's a good way to do it. And that way they can see the process sort of from beginning to end from their side of that submitted assessment. Okay. So I'm in this course. It's a course I'm teaching right now in, um, in this semester. Here's my course assignments. One of the assignments that they have to submit. And um, Vince, I'm gonna rely on you to correct me if I make a mistake here. One of, the, one of the assignments they have to submit is a, what I call a vision presentation. And so I scroll down here and so the student can click on the vision presentation. This goes back to what uh, Erica said earlier and Andy said, yes, you're correct in that you should, you have to have an assignment already in your grade book in order for this to work. Okay, so um, Oh, in this case, Rick, it looks like uh, you've already submitted this particular assignment. Oh, so right, yeah. it's already been added to the grade center. So what you could do is exit and save your preview information. And then we can actually go into the grade center then and look at it from what is the instructor perspective. Okay. I'm just trying to get things out of the way here, like the 
the the bar with everybody's picture on it. Uh huh. I got it. Okay. So now I'm going to go into my grade book. And you can see here is Vandermolen, who just submitted a stellar response to this vision <laughs> presentation. Okay, so here's the attempt. Now, in order for me to see the rubric that, that I attached, you have to um, open up this, this um, comment box, the feedback to learner box. And there is the, the rubric that was attached. Okay. Now, what you don't know is I already went in there and I assessed myself based on my response. So you can look at that by just clicking on this little icon here and it pops up for you mm. and you can see oh my gosh Vandermolen unsatisfactory when it comes to candidates understand collaboratively blah 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 okay so i've gone in as the assessor as the instructor and i've assessed this student based on their performance um, which gave a raw total of 10 out of 30. okay and you can make other comments in there depending on um what you do with that information in your program and you, you save, or in, in this case, since there's already a grade in there, I could exit. But here's the thing that you need to decide. Um, most of you have already decided this, but the thing you need to be aware of, and Vince, just jump in here if I'm saying this incorrectly, but since I'm not using this uh, rubric assessment for my students performance as the primary grade it's used it's not being used for grading it is being used to assess for cape and accreditation purposes but it's not being used for grading i really needed to, i really need to use to grade the student first so that whatever they whatever they submitted is graded first and then secondarily i would go in and assess the student through the rubric, because if you don't do that, then it's you can see that it's automatically giving the ten points out of the out of thirty for the um, assessment that I gave. Is there a way to hide the rubric though, so they can't ever see it? I mean, that's yeah, yes, yep. They don't. You can choose for them not to see it. If if you're using it like me in this situation, you, there's a button that you can click. And that would that would allow you to keep it out of the grade center so that they can't see it, but you can. Rick, if you do that, um, if I did that, if I clicked the button so that they couldn't see it, and and then went and for some reason did the rubric first, would the rubric grade still go into the grading box? The rubric grade would go into the grading box. I don't know how to stop it from doing that. Okay, Vince, so regardless know? of yes, whether you let is... students see it or not. So when you uh, fill out the rubric, you'll be prompted then a separate window or pop-up will display that will ask whether or not you want to use the rubric score then as the student's grade. Ah. And at that point, you would select the cancel option. So what that does then is it saves all of the data or all of the scores in your rubric, but does mm -hmm. not actually apply it then to what is the student's final score for this particular assignment that you can just manually enter into what is the um, the student grade column and then click submit to have it actually designated as the student's final grade for the assignment. Okay. Thank you, Vince. So, so go ahead. Um, what happened with me is when I uploaded the rubric, the assignment is worth 15 points, but it added the points from the rubric. Right. I Ooh. changed it use for use for secondary evaluation. I also went back and made the points possible to 15. It had upped it to 27. Then when I went in and submitted my my assignment, the rubric scores had changed to reflect the 15 points. I don't know where I messed up. 
Yeah, okay. and that's why I just cleared that attempt, Vince, so I could try to go through and- uh, yeah, That'd be helpful, thanks. And do it again, so you, we can go through the process. So this is where we're in, we're in student preview. And so yep. now I'm just pretending that I'm a student and I'm yep. just gonna um, submit. Okay, this is oh, wrong computer. I got two computers sitting yep. here in front of me. Submit. Okay, and so I'm now as a student, I'm gonna go ahead and submit this assignment. Yep. Okay, and so now I'm gonna get out of the, I'm gonna exit preview and I'm gonna keep the preview user and all data. Okay, I'll go back down to my grade book. And you could have gone into, well, needs grading too. It's whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. And you can see now there's a new, there's an attempt there. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna view the attempt. Okay, so now it's fresh, right? There's no, there's no grade assigned there. Now, this is my situation and it may not be your situations and Andy and Terry, you, you guys um, were talking about something different too. So my situation is this vision presentation rubric is not being used for the grade. It is being used simply to assess the student primarily for accreditation purposes. Okay. So before I actually, um, before I actually go ahead and do that, I want to make sure that I am giving the student a grade okay. on, in this assignment. So let's just say I gave him, you know, one. Okay. Okay. And so now Vince, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong here. The next step would be to submit that so that the grade is submitted. You could correct. submit it if you wanted to be able to, let's just say, go through all of the assignments and then grade the students on yep. the actual assignment itself. But at this point, what you could also do would be to move uh, directly to what is the secondary evaluation. So yep. here you could click on the rubric then for that purpose. And that's what I found simpler to do, especially when it's a paper, because I, I could go through with a philosophy of ed. It, it did help to have that, that rubric right there because I, I had specific questions I'm looking for while I'm grading it. Okay, so so I have the grade that I've assigned them in there, and I've also just assessed them. My gosh, trying to get all these windows out of the way is really interesting. Um, so now I'm going to hit submit here for the assessment. And it's going to see this. Do you see this uh, window that came up here? Mm -hmm use this rubric as the grading rubric. And the answer to that is yeah. cancel. cancel. Okay. Then you're gonna get a window that pops up that says success rubric evaluation was saved. So now I have for, for the accreditation purposes and CAPE and all that other stuff that, that we use this for, I have my grade in here, but I also have the information saved in here for this particular student's performance. Okay as it so relates that, to the okay so all i have to do then because my rubric points changed from three to two, one to a percentage of my total 15 is just go back and change my rubric to the points that i wanted to represent sure that's another okay. way to look at it yeah okay because that's what just it it tweaked on itself the number of total points for the rubric tweaked itself when i tweak the score. So it's just a matter of me going in and changing the rubric. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So one of the things that I think um, at this point would be good, Terry and Andy is just, you know, continue to open up to questions. We've got quite a few uh, things in the chat. Uh, I, I think the part that I would want you to not walk away from this big bite with is don't panic. There's lots of resources <laughs> out there that can help right. you. Um, you know, I, I chose to pilot this because I wanted to, that's, that's my anal retentiveness. Like I want to know this before, you know, the last minute. So that's why I'm here this morning. And I think it's, there's a lot of resources out there that can help you get through this. 
And um, I would, I know for our department, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time together and walk people through this process so that they can feel comfortable about, you know, they're in a good spot. They know where, to, they know where they need to be. So what do you guys think? Uh, it's going to take some practice. It, it, and I, I like what Rick said when he, when he mentioned that you'd come back to this and you're re-remembering it every semester for a bit, because we don't do it all the time. And there's, parts that you forget so just let's just work on it with each other it makes a whole lot simpler for us to to know that it's going to be not quite perfect all the time and we can get there so um i was trying to read erica's question it, i she talked to erica i don't understand what you're oh okay i got it <laughs> if I, read I was it, just i was just explaining what i was doing and that because i was nervous about clicking on cancel but it does save it and students don't see it which is really good because I'm in the midst of grading 78 of these things and I'd rather not <laughs> go back and do it twice. So this is really helpful. Yeah, yeah it, that's one of the things I really liked that I hated about live text was, sorry if someone likes live text, but it bothered me. I'd have to grade all my papers, my, my philosophy of ads, and then I'd have to go in and then it felt like I was grading them twice as mm -hmm. I went through because I had to change it into that other rubric. So this is nice because I like clicking right on it while I'm grading it and I can look for those specific questions at the same time. It just, it's a one grading process instead of two. Yep, and I agree with your, your idea there, um, Erica, in that we will send this recording out, but again, it's, it's, a, it's an hour long. So creating a, a quick um, tutorial. instructional video tutorial will be helpful to share. Uh, the other thing is the other the other big thing that uh, was just mentioned is um, in the chat was that you know the reason for this is because Blackboard is has capable of doing this. Um, not only are we saving our students what one hundred and forty dollars um, for a membership to Live Text, but it's 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 not requiring us to navigate two different platforms any longer. And um, and in addition to that, the other piece is it's right there in the same spot, which is Blackboard. Um, grade center, you can do it all in one spot. Um, I always struggled with the going to live text. I'd already graded the assignment and sometimes I didn't do it right after the fact and I'd go back into live text and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't remember exactly. So you'd have to navigate two different uh, platforms to see how you assess the student. And you know, it's, I, to me, it's right there all in one spot. It's creating efficiencies rather than, um, so yeah, it's, it's new learning for people, but I think in the end, um, if you can embrace the idea that it's gonna be more efficient, it will in the long run be better for, for us as instructors too. Mm -hmm. I agree. Any other thoughts or questions, comments, ideas that we need to, uh, we need to take a look at as we get uh, close to the end of our, our big bite time here? The one thing that I, I don't know, I haven't gone through the chat to see if um, it's been responded to, but for those of us who teach field courses, like the internship for school counseling, how are we going to do the assess, how are our site supervisors going to do the assessment this fall? Uh, great question. I don't know the so answer to that. Judy, has Karen talked with you at all about that or? Has not. I emailed her, but I know she's super busy and I haven't followed up with that. So I'm not at all throwing anybody under the bus. It's as much my no. lack of connecting. No, I think that's true also for um, special ed admin, Judy. Um, I, you know, for us in, in ed leadership, ours, ours doesn't happen until 687. So we haven't panicked about that yet, but I can see why you'd want to know the answer to that. Yeah, I've got four students who will be completing their internship this semester. So that final previous live text assessment that their site supervisors would be done. I mean, we have the paper pencil copy that they do for a midterm formative assessment that could be utilized, but obviously that's not electronic friendly. Judy, if you can send me an email with the, the, the placement information, we yep. can work to get that distributed. I'm thinking uh, because your placements look so similar to the undergrad field placements with the way they're structured, um, it's probably going to be best if we use what the same setup that we're using for the undergrads this semester. 
Um, so yeah, let's let's get in contact and work that out. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I'll send you an email, Alex. Thank you so much. Yep. Alex, can you just briefly encapsulated say what is the undergrad program using this this semester for field? We're using our former assessment system COE data because okay. just with the complexity of trying to create each of the placements yeah. and distribute it to the CTs, we had a functioning system in the past. So, um, and it's still thankfully available. So that's what we're gonna okay. be using for the undergrads this semester. Um, okay. And then looking at developing something still with uh, Blackboard, hopefully mm -hmm. for the winter semester. <laughs> For the UFC side of it and the, you know, cooperating teacher side of it, will it look the same? Will it feel the same to them? It's, I mean, it's, it's still the same COE data mm -hmm. assessment system that we used back in, when was that, 2013? <laughs> oh. So um, oh. <laughs> it's, it's functioning. Um, it's right. uh, actually, in, I mean, when we compare it to live text, it's, a, I think, a much more straightforward system, especially okay. for any of the field people, so. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, it should work really well. Okay.